I didn't hear the first part. Um, so yeah, I'm a first year doc student here at KU getting um, my PhD in sports psych. Sorry, I have a mint in my mouth. Prior to this, I was at Illinois State getting my master's um, in sports psych, also working with their women's basketball and volleyball team as their graduate assistant. So that was an awesome experience. And then before that, I was at Wellesley College out in Boston uh, playing basketball and got my undergrad in psych. Did a lot of things there. Did almost everything. I was jack of all trades in that athletic department. So yeah, and here I am. <laughs> nice to meet you, Chelsea. Hi, nice to meet you as well. All right. So here's Cindy. Hi. Hi, you Cindy. And I chatted. Did did yes. we? Yeah, we, we chatted a few weeks ago. So, um, Cindy Swadek, uh, first year master's student and volleyball coach, etc. I think you probably know a little bit about me already. <laughs> so I won't bore you with anything else, but good to see you guys. Good to see you too. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Troy Weiniger. I ran uh, collegiately at uh, Fort Hayes State University, a Division II college uh, here in Kansas. I was there for four years and then came to KU to finish uh, my undergrad. And I, I obtained my degree in exercise science and um, I'm applying to medical schools right now um, in that process. And uh, in the meantime, I wanted to start the master's program in sports psychology because um, I think that would be a really good uh, dynamic for physicians to have. Um, and uh, yeah, really excited about the PCA initiative and uh, just about being able to talk to coaches, parents, competitors all around and kind of use the experience I've gotten through cross country and through just life in general to, to help them out. So I'm excited to be presenting today. Nice meeting you. Yeah, nice meeting you, Ruben. Nice to see you again, Kelly. You too, Troy. You look very nice in your tie, all done. Hey, hey thank you. <laughs> I, I, I'm feeling a little underdressed. <laughs> you look great, Ruben. <laughs> Ruben always has his pajamas on from the waist down, just letting you all know that right now. Right. Hey, that's the way to do it. That's the trick, right? <laughs> All right. So, are you guys ready to get rolling? We are, whenever you are. So, Ruben, um, okay. I don't know if you heard from the beginning. Last time they all did the introduction to the athlete workshop, um, mm -hmm. they all did the same thing. And then this time, what they decided to do was each pick a different part so that they're going to be able to go through the entire workshop. So, yeah. they did the intro. Troy's going to do Elm Tree of Mastery. Uh, I think you said Chelsea's going to do E Tank or Cindy? Cindy's doing E Tank. Okay. Cindy's doing E Tank, and then Chelsea's going to close this out. All right. So, yeah. Awesome. So they're going to put a workshop in, which is fantastic. Okay. Good deal. All right, Troy, I'll let you take away, bud. I'm going to set you guys up. And Troy, while you're up there, just make sure they can hear you. Okay, perfect. We'll go from there. All right. You see okay? Yeah. Okay. Great. So as I said last time, if you guys just want to use each other in the room, I mean, Ruben and I are welcome to jump in, but sometimes it's easier if you just kind of are talking to the live people in the room. And we'll sort of be a fly on the wall, and then we can just give you some feedback after. Um, Show me your shoes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We got. <laughs> <laughs> we, does this does this work? That is uh, the projector, bud. Oh, shoot. oh, do you want the clicker? Here. Will that work? Yeah. You gotta plug it into the computer. Uh, yeah. And then. Okay, so then you can use oh, these perfect. go back and forth, or you can just click. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah. Just don't right click, or yeah, don't right click. I think we did. You got this, Troy. Woo! Perfect. <laughs> okay, so we just finished uh, the introduction, uh, and now I'm ready to introduce you guys to the first uh, PCA principal, uh, and that's going to be the Elm Tree of Mastery. Um, now, in the past, whenever we've uh, presented this Triple Impact Competitor Workshop, we've had a lot of uh, athletes come away remembering the acronym ELM. Like if we see them a year later, or, or however long it is, uh, the next time we see them, a lot of times they're able to recall uh, this acronym ELM, which I'll just tell you guys now, it stands for uh, effort, learning, and that mistakes are okay. And, you know, I kind of like to be able to visualize like what, what I'm learning. And I, I want people to come away from this workshop 
um, being able to visualize uh, more than just the acronym in itself, but visualize themselves as as an elm tree. I know that might seem weird, but I want you guys to have an open mind um, and have this to look back on whenever you think of this triple impact competitor workshop and um, what you guys are going to learn today. So here is an American elm tree. Um, does any what are what are some first things that come to mind whenever you see uh, this magnificent tree? Uh, sturdy. Sturdy. Yes, that is one thing that I was hoping you would say. Anything else? I was thinking strength. Strength. Yes, that is. Uh, those were, those are two things I was hoping to get. Um, a couple quick facts about the American elm tree. Uh, it is one of the fastest growing trees in the Midwest. It has an intricate root system that digs deep uh, to get to water and nutrients during drought. Um, it comes from a very small seed, uh, the smaller than the tip of your finger. And it's very popular, as you can see, uh, for its great amount of shade that it gives off. Now, I want you guys to kind of bring that back to yourselves. And I want you to think about how can you relate to an elm tree in this uh, first principle. I want you guys to think about um that root system that i just described and how um when you look at yourself as a competitor and an athlete you can think about how you've been grounded in your sport through the things that matter the most to you just like this tree you dig deep to find meaning uh in that sport and the different things you're doing uh you provide comfort just like the the shade from the tree to everybody around you um and you're strong. Think of yourself being as strong as this elm tree that's able to withstand the hard uh, winters that, of the Midwest <laughs> that we're experiencing right now. And I just really want you to think of this first principle uh, more than just the acronym, but be able to visualize, come back to, man, it might seem strange to think of yourself as a tree, but I mean, look how beautiful this tree is and what it represents. So just wanted to bring that up going forward um but as we said um the elm tree of mastery so we said the acronym already that e is for what effort effort effort, effort. effort. the l what was the l for learning. learning learning great what was the m for mistakes are okay and that mistakes are okay so we're going to say that that is the mastery definition that we're going to use at pca for winning okay we think that uh, winning should be focused on those three things uh, that if you're giving your all giving your full effort You're learning from every competition every practice and that uh, you're not focusing on your mistakes But you're focusing on how you can grow from your mistakes that those are the more important things to be focusing on During practice or in competition in preparation for for your sport um, Does anybody have a guess? or want to take a stab at what the scoreboard definition um, would be um, in comparison to the mastery definition. Does anybody, um, and what's your name, I'm sorry? My name's Hannah. Hannah, thank you. Yeah. Um, what would you say uh, the scoreboard definition of winning would be? Wins, losses. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's, that, and yeah, that's the, that's the first, that's the very first one. You know, a lot of times I think we get caught up on that wins, loss columns runs scored versus runs not scored. How many points you gave up versus how many points you scored. Instead of focusing on your effort, how much, uh, how much you got better that day, um, some of the intangibles, I think that we really let um, get, get masked by, say, we, we take a loss. Um, and I, I hope you guys can kind of relate to that and see where we're coming from. Um, and also we'd say that uh, when we're focusing on the scoreboard definition, we're comparing ourselves uh, to others. Um, would you guys um, agree with that? Would you say whenever you're um, focusing on how much better somebody else is doing, that it takes away from your game and how much you can improve? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And the, the last one, you guys said mistakes are okay. What do you think the scoreboard definition says about uh, mistakes? A part of learning. Part of learning. Well, that they're not okay. That they're not okay. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's actually that's uh, that's that's kind of I don't know. At least that was the environment that I grew up in. Um, 
for me, I also played um, basketball in high school. And if you made a mistake, you were pulled out of the game. And you had to play with this uh, this kind of cloud over you. Like, oh, man, like I really better not make a mistake more than focusing on just giving it your all and uh, learning from every every opportunity, whether that's a mistake or whether you made a good play. Um, so we just want to really foster that environment um, at PCA and focus on this elm tree acronym and visualize yourself being that elm tree, strong, ready to comfort others. And um, I kind of wanted to, I don't know, you guys might be familiar with the movie uh, Friday Night Lights. This is, a, I feel like, a very powerful uh, scene from that movie that uh, the coach here gives a it's real simple. little talk about uh, winning and losing. Yeah, two more quarters, and that's it. Now, most of you have been playing this game for 10 years. you got two more quarters, and after that, most of you will never play this game again as long as you live. Now, you all have known me for a while, and for a long time now, you've been hearing me talk about being perfect. Well, I want you to understand something. To me, being perfect is not about that scoreboard out there. It's not about winning. It's about you and your relationship to yourself and your family and your friends. Being perfect is about being able to look your friends in the eye and know that you didn't let them down because you told them the truth. And that truth is, is that you did everything that you could. There wasn't one more thing that you could have done. Can you live in that moment? As best you can, with clear eyes and love in your heart. With joy in your heart. Um, <clears throat> that, that scene still gives me chills. I don't know. What, what, are, what do you guys, if you guys don't mind, uh, can I get a volunteer to uh, kind of, can anybody relate to that scene? Can anybody relate to that, whether present in their sport or in the past? There's blood on the uniforms. Do you have anything to like add with uh, with whether a coach was able to meet you and give you that kind of guidance, or how did your coach make you feel in a locker room like that? Yeah, it was our junior year of high school. We were at state championship in Wichita's arena, and we got pitted up against. I think we were the eight seed playing number two, and they were known for being brutal on the court. And we every article that had been published for us said like we're gonna lose. Like everyone was like, now nope, they're about to just get blown away. And we listened to a speech right before that, and our coach went out and goes, I don't care what the results are today. You guys just go out and give it your all. And we ended up going and upsetting them yes. uh, by two points. And we ended up losing the second round, but like that was a championship That's game sweet. for us. Yeah. It was insane. That's, yeah. That's amazing. Did anybody else have a, a locker room kind of story like that? I wish we had that. I had yeah. a coach here. We referred to it as like we just had to go and take care of business. And his saying was always, um, I'd rather – uh, lose or win ugly rather than lose pretty wow. kind of thing. So it wasn't about like take you know doing the X's and O's. It was literally just fucking that win. Yeah, and I get it. And like we had a lot of success, but um, I don't think it was always the most motivational, especially when wow. we didn't give our best effort. You know, and it's like what did we really win? Yeah. So is there any others? Yeah, I think that. Well, I got chills hearing both of you talk about that. I think. Uh, I think that is one of the most beautiful things about sport, and I think that is one of the things that we at PCA want to promote the most, is that whenever whenever the focus isn't solely on winning, but you're out there giving it your all for the person next to you, or for the sake of the sport in general, that that is what it's about. And I just, I love this scene from that movie, because uh, you see the passion, you see everything in the locker room, and it really isn't about being perfect. It's the sport is going to end at the end of the day, but the life lessons that we're going to take away from the sport and how we're treating everybody else, how we can look each other in the eyes at the end of the at the end of the game or at the end of the season and tell them that we gave it everything we had, I feel like it's more important than that win loss column. And uh, I just wanted to share that and see uh, kind of kind of what you guys could relate to that um, and what you guys might think. 
So, um, I also wanted to bring the research into this. I want you guys to know that we're not just spitting a bunch of facts at you guys, but that the, the things that we're presenting to you today has been backed by over 25 years of research uh, from prestigious universities like Stanford and other schools of the such. Um, and that the research has proven that with this mastery climate, where we're focusing on effort, where we're focusing on learning every day, and we're making an environment where mistakes are okay and a part of that process, that, um, well, first off, what do you think? Do you think, how do you think uh, anxiety, what do you think will happen with anxiety in a, in a climate like that? Goes down. You think it goes down? What about uh, your self-confidence? I didn't pay him to say this. I didn't pay him. So you're absolutely right. Anxiety goes down and the self-confidence goes up. Um, you guys, you guys got it. So <clears throat> wanted to bring this uh, this amazing resource uh, to the presentation today. Uh, this uh, book, Elevating Your Game, was written by uh, the founder of the PCA, uh, Jim Thompson, and it has amazing information. Um, over all the things we're going to be discussing today. But also, uh, to start off with the Elm Tree, um, it gives a lot of uh, great insight and uh, tools for uh, responding to mistakes. Um, at PCA, we want to uh, really reiterate that mistakes are temporary, that uh, we need to adopt this mindset that if you made a mistake, you're going to do better on the next play it's not gonna affect your entire game. There was one athlete we talked to who, uh, depending if his shot went in on the first basket, uh, was if he was gonna have a good game or not. Do you think that his uh, mindset was that a mistake is a temporary one, or do you think it was a long term? Okay. Yeah, it was absolutely, and it affects everything that he did the rest of the game. We also want to, uh, I'll stick with the basketball uh, analogy there, um, that mistakes are localized. Uh, we, we think that uh, oftentimes some athletes, for example, might make a bad uh, pass and it would be a turnover. And then they'll believe that their, 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 their shooting is going to be off because they made a turnover. Uh, and that mistake isn't localized to that play, uh, that uh, skill, but it, it, it consumes them and doesn't allow them to play to uh, their max potential. And that mistakes are changeable. I love this one. And I think that uh, I struggle with this in running. Uh, if, I, if I didn't uh, hit a certain mile time of the race, um, I would kind of let that dictate the rest of my race. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't say, oh, man, I ran five seconds slower here. Well, I can make that up. It would, I would shut down. And I think that um, we need to remember that mistakes are changeable. And this book... Uh, has some great tools uh, for adopting that mindset. Also, in the Elm Toolkit, um, gives some great ideas on how to move forward from mistakes. Um, real quick, does anybody have um, want to volunteer to give a definition of what an effort goal might be versus an outcome goal? So, what's your name? Cindy. Cindy, thank you. Would so. You um, this is something that we do on my team is that we have a set of effort goals um, for volleyball like uh, We're gonna hustle into the huddle. Yeah. we're going to have high energy warm-ups And those are all things that can be marked by effort yes. instead of are we going to win this game tonight? Yeah, that's that you said it like that's uh, Things that you can that often you can't measure like that's tough, um, you can, but you can feel it. You can tell if the energy's there, if they're bringing it to the huddle. Um, and sometimes, and we want to believe that when you set these effort goals to hustle into the huddle, to dive for loose balls, um, that those are going to lead to the outcome goals. But we think that oftentimes people adopt a mindset of if we don't hit 20 wins, the season's a bust. That's just not, that's, <laughs> It's just not the it's just not the PCA way, I guess. That's that's what we're trying to to get by to you guys. And I hope you guys can agree with that. Do you think if uh, you fall short of a twenty win season, that that means that everything you did uh, was a failure? But sometimes people have that mindset, and we're looking to to wipe that out. Well, and speaking of the mindset, uh, this uh, the growth mindset uh, is um, discussed a lot by uh, Carol Dweck in her book Mindfulness. 
Um, and she really uh, focuses on this mindset of, uh, of growing from uh, your potential. Some people have this fixed mindset where they believe they can't get any better. And Carol Dweck says that we can always improve. We can always better ourselves. And we shouldn't say, this is the best I can be. Um, a mistake ritual. Before I go into that, does anybody have an idea of what a mistake ritual might look like? I just clap my hands. Clap your like hands? one time. Does that help you kind of reset? Yeah, I think it's like a way for me to like kind of snap out of it, you know? Yeah, that's perfect. That, that is exactly what uh, I was hoping. I was hoping to hear something along those lines. That's what we're going for. The mistake ritual, um, Ken Revisa, a uh, renowned sports psychologist, he came up with this idea of the mistake ritual of uh, flushing, like flushing a toilet, flushing the mistakes away. And uh, I think that's a, a vivid um, imagery, just like the, the elm tree, as we discussed earlier. If you can visualize yourself flushing away your mistakes, I think that it can show yourself and your teammates can see it. And they can be like, hey, he, he, she's recognizing the mistake and we're going we're gonna to tell her that we got her back. And I think that mistake ritual is, is critical uh, to adopt. And uh, you can read more about that in the book and um, just another way to overcome mistakes and make yourself better. Um, I want us to break out into a little discussion period here. Um, I, I want us to talk about setbacks. I feel like sometimes setbacks can uh, break a season. I feel like uh, sometimes uh, they can bust the season completely and people will try to salvage um, and make the best of their situations. And I want you guys to break up and get with a, an individual in the room that you do not know. I want you to ask them uh, if the holiday season, find out what their favorite Thanksgiving food is. Well, find out their name, their th <laughs> favorite Thanksgiving food, um, and just have a little discussion about setbacks and how grit. Um, would somebody mind reading this definition of grit? The ability to stay focused on a long-term goal in the face of short-term disappointment. Thank you. We'll, and discuss grit and how that plays into setbacks. And I'll give you guys two to three minutes to discuss that. And then I'll call on a uh, few of you to, uh, to hear what you guys think about um, setbacks and grit and your favorite Thanksgiving food. So, break. And then do you guys just, we'll just... Yeah. We'll just fast forward through the three minutes. <laughs> um, does anybody want to volunteer? Um, oh, Hannah, was it? Yeah. Um, Hannah, how uh, how did you and your partner uh, discuss setbacks and grit, and uh, what was your favorite Thanksgiving food? Well, my favorite Thanksgiving food is green bean casserole for sure. Oh man, that's yeah, that's sure. a classic. The onion strings on top. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I think if you would have asked me how I view setbacks a few years ago, it would have, I would have given you a completely different answer. I think as I've grown up a little bit in my sport, you learn that setbacks are an opportunity to, I guess, get better. And you learn from your mistakes and that weaknesses aren't necessarily weaknesses. They're just rooms for improvement. So I think it's just two different mindsets for me. Um, I still really struggle with them. Yeah. I still really, really struggle with setbacks. But I think that's how grit plays into it. Is if yeah. I have a little grit, then I can overcome my setbacks easier. That's that's uh, that's some, that's that's perfect. That's kind of what we uh, we at PCA uh, want to endorse. Just that setbacks don't define you. That they they are a tough part of sport. Um, but if you can adopt a mentality with grit, you can overcome them and. And you can teach life lessons, and you can deal with things on the on the track, on the pitch, on the field. If you can deal with things in sport, then you are going to be well prepared to deal with things in life down the line that might be even tougher than anything you'll um, encounter in sport. And I think that's the beautiful thing about setbacks on the court, um, on the course, anything that uh, it prepares you for tougher things down the road. Um, so thank you for sharing. Sure. Um, can I get uh, somebody to volunteer to read this quote by uh, George Mumford? Cindy? Failure is not a person. It is a result you do not like. How do you feel about that quote? I like it. Yeah? 
I think that just kind of going back to the setbacks, uh, setbacks, we, we don't like them, um, but it, it, it doesn't define you. And it's just something that we might not like at the time, but it's something we can all learn from and grow from. So with that wraps up the Elm Tree of Mastery. And now um, we're ready to discuss the second principle of this workshop, and that is filling the emotional tank. Yeah, Troy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Kelly, are you wanting to break down and then and do feedback, or do you want to do feedback at the end? How are you wanting to? I think it's probably easier to do it while it's fresh in our minds. Sounds good. My mind doesn't remember that long from one person to the next. <laughs> that's all right. That's, hey, that's really fun. I thought I'd ask. Yeah. Troy, how did you feel doing that? I felt like more myself. Yeah. Um, I put, I don't know if that put in the video was okay. Uh, yeah. I figured, okay. I, uh, I definitely felt like I was bringing more of my personality into it and I was more uh, comfortable. Um, I don't know if it was too long um, for that section. Um, but I felt like maybe some of the transitions could have been smoother um, just with more practice. But um, I, uh, I definitely prepared on it quite a bit. So I felt, um, felt like I knew the material pretty well. I hope it felt more relaxed and everything. And um, yeah, I'm interested to hear what you all think. Yeah, you definitely, I could tell you felt more comfortable. You seem, yeah. I think that was one of the, I looked back to see some of the feedback I gave you last time and you seemed like pretty rigid and, and as soon as it was over, you were like laughing and joking around. So it was right. great to see more of your own personality. And I think it just makes you more comfortable yeah. as, your, as a speaker. So yeah. I thought that was great. Yeah. I would love to hear from the people in the room though. What's one thing that you really liked about what Troy did either you can say an improvement from the last time or just something specific that he put in here or, um, and then also what's one, one, um, bit of feedback you can give him on how he can improve moving forward. So Hannah, you can ask people in the room. I can't see who's there. Sure, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll go ahead and start for you, buddy. Um, I think one thing you did really great was, again, you seemed more calm this time. Um, you felt like your presence was more um, relatable, I think. Yeah. So it was easier for us to connect. Um, I liked your use of the elm tree. Good. I know you, <laughs> and so that's pretty funny because <laughs> yeah. I think as athletes, you need to have a little bit of comedic relief in the room because right. they're probably tired and they just got back from practice or whatever. And so they're like, all right, this is, this is funny. <laughs> like we can relate to that. The feedback I'll give on the backside is if we're going to use something like that, we need to make sure we're relating it back again throughout. I think you did yeah. better this time because we practiced that. But just thinking about um, how can I relate that little analogy throughout? Okay. elm tree if that makes sense i think you did once but i think utilizing that more so then you didn't just put a tree in there for nothing maybe you talk about like a setback being like a drought or something sure yeah yeah however maybe however you're going to relate it yeah okay. however you're going to relate that back but yeah you guys cindy um, i would just say that really key in on the points you want to make and then be more succinct yeah just be more direct to the point um I know you're chatty like a lot yeah. of us are. Mm -hmm. And so just making sure that you, you know, because if you're in a full workshop and you've got to get through three of these right. and you may have gotten wordy at the beginning, you may start to lose people. Right. So that makes sense. I did love the tree too, though. That was great. Okay. Just seemed like a Troy thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> the facts. Um, I really like Troy. You're, um, I love Friday Night Lights. So that hit me in the heart. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot yep. of kids, um, I think college, even high school can, yeah. can relate. Um, the one thing I would add, and I think, Maybe we did it more when we were working with club sports is when we're relating if we're relating to college athletes i think a lot of times they get thrown off when we say you know mistakes are okay and um you know some of these concepts where we like whoa whoa, whoa wait wait like the score the score does still win you know telling a college right. athlete or the score does still matter so telling a college athlete they get a little nervous uh so i think that you could just kind of be real with them and be like hey yo i'm not saying mistakes are you know, like we're, we're not telling you to go out there and make all these mistakes and that, you know, your co co coaches don't know what they're talking about, but we're just saying like when you focus more on the effort rather than yeah. getting caught up in those and just be real with them because you're, co you were a college athlete too, right. you know, and if someone said, Hey, your times don't matter, you'd say, yeah. all right, well, it, screw yeah. you, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Um, so just kind of talk to them about that and just say like, when you take care of all of the things here, everything else is a byproduct, right? So when right. we focus on our effort, 
the you know everything else winning is a byproduct. Thanks, okay. Ruben. Just uh, I, I'm uh, processing that feedback, which I agree with, and and the way I I put it is, we're not saying that winning isn't important. We're saying that obsessing with winning and focusing on winning more than the process is counterproductive. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, the way you get to the important <laughs> result that we all want is uh, is through mastery. So I think that ties in. I, I'm not sure who's who was speaking there, but I think that was Chelsea. Chelsea. Chelsea, you know, I think that that's how I look at what you were you were describing. Um, so, so you know, Troy, um, uh, I think that you know this stuff really well. I think one of your strengths is your mastery of the content, um, you know, which is super important. You know, it's just talk about trees and roots and foundations. You know, <laughs> mastery of the content is a foundation. Um, Kelly, am I am I supposed to give a suggestion for? Uh, improvement at this point or that'd be great yep okay so 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 i'll stick with that theme of content and just a fine-tuning thing troy um when, when you talked about effort goals and you got an example from the group you said yeah effort goals you know are those things you can't measure yeah do you remember saying that yeah and, i did and, and and um actually the best effort goals are measurable mm -hmm. just like just like outcome goals um, the, the difference is that the effort goals are much more under the control of the athlete than, okay. than an outcome goal, but they are still measurable. For example, if we're going to, you know, uh, if we're going to set an effort goal, our effort goal is not going to be, let's try hard. Right. Mm -hmm. Our effort go goal is going to be, we're going to sprint on and off the field every inning. Um, we are going to, uh, we are going to, to be in position covering the attacker on every spike attempt. Um, we're gonna we're gonna make contact with our opponent every time a shot goes up. Doesn't mean we're gonna get the rebound. We can't control right. that. And 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 you might argue well you can't control where you can make contact with the opponent, but it's much more under your control. So I just wanted to, to um, definitely make that fine tuning point right. um, on effort on effort goals. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ruben. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm not going to repeat whatever. I enjoyed it quite a bit, Troy. What did what you say? That? I enjoyed it quite a bit, Troy. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just really enjoyed watching you. I think you had more fun with this part of it. And I think, you know, if you're enjoying what you're doing, then the athletes sitting there in front of you are going to enjoy it a lot more. So it was nice to see a lot of your personality come out. I thought the elm tree was great. I think that's fun to put that in there. I might shorten it up a little bit. Because okay. the, um, and, and also, I mean, you can also connect it when it's your workshop, you're doing the whole thing, you're going to get to roots later on. So if you're yeah. talking about roots now, feel free to say, you know, elm trees also have this amazing root system and we're going to get to the last principle and it's going to talk about how important that root system is. So, I mean, these principles are all really connected. So I would, I would use that, you know, throughout the whole thing. Since this is the first principle, I think it's okay to give a little, a little hint with that. Um, I like the, I also, I very, I like in the very beginning, um, to kind of set the stage for why it's important. I mean, I think showing the tree was great, but I want you to get a little bit quicker to why is this mastery climate, this mastery culture so important? Like, I really think a lot of students, particularly more than even coaches, they wanna know like, what's in this for me? How is this gonna help me? Yeah, it's great to focus on mastery versus the scoreboard, but you know, sometimes they just think it's all theory and they're not actually thinking about, this is going to lead to better performance. This is non-controversial. In, in the research and the best practices. The teams that focus on the process, not the scoreboard, not the outcome, will perform better. As you know, as you said, winning is the byproduct. So all of the things I think are great in theory. So just to hit that up front, I think will make everybody pay attention, like, wait, this is gonna make me perform better? That's what I wanna hear. So just a, just a idea. Um, I do like the Friday Night Lights. We had for years videos in this section of the, our workshop um, from the movie We Are Marshall. Yeah. And at the, uh, I don't know if you've, you've seen that movie, but we had the quote, you know, we had a little clip from the first coach and then we had a little clip, clip from the Matthew McConaughey um, yeah. coach. And we just actually took that out about two years ago because people had seen it so much, but we do have it available too. So I think anytime you can use a movie clip is great. I think it was fine too, because you just have to give credit where credit is due so that they don't come back and say, well, PCA doesn't own the rights to this. So right. okay. that's all. Um, I like how you were asking more examples of people and asking them to talk a little bit more. I think that was great. You said getting groups and talk about this. The one thing I think your discussion was great where you said, um, I want you to talk about setbacks and grit 
but I guarantee there's going to be a group that's like, what do we talk about? Okay. So what specifically did you want them to talk about? Yeah, that's true. What uh, was your question? Like, yeah, I didn't say that. I should have. And I guess it is tough to like force them to want to share a setback that they've had because maybe they're not as uh, willing to be vulnerable. Um, that was kind of my question was uh, what is like a setback you've gone through yep. and how have you learned from that setback? Um, maybe that's implementing grit, um, but what is a setback you've gone through and how have you learned from it was kind so that, of. That's the question. And okay. I want you to be that direct because okay. you're not asking everybody in the room to share out loud their setback. I right. mean, that would be asking them to be vulnerable, but asking them in a small group to say, think of a setback that you've had in your life and what you've learned from it and how you've overcome it. I want you to talk about that. Somebody that really wants to be vulnerable will say something really deep about them. Somebody yeah. else might say, oh, I ran out of gas last week. And it was really, you know, so okay. you're not telling them to like share their deepest, darkest secrets but you're being specific because I think that was the goal you wanted. And if you just say, talk about grit and setbacks, they'll be like, grit and setbacks are good. You know, okay. <laughs> and yeah. that might be what you get. So right. I always say in group work, be super specific about exactly what you want them to talk about and then you'll get more from them. I like um, that. My only last comment is to, um, I would push the effort goals a little bit more because those are the tools. And a lot of times when you say effort goals versus outcome goals, again, they understand the theory but they don't understand, a lot of times, even coaches, don't actually know what is a specific effort goal. So, you know, get in your groups, get with a partner that is the same thing that you do, come up with five effort goals that you can work on at practice tomorrow. Wow, okay. Like have them write them down and have them think about it. And then when you're sharing in the room, they can share from all different sports and other sports might be like, oh my gosh, I never even thought of that. That's a great one that could apply to my sport. So it just makes things from the abstract theory research to tangible. This is something I can take home and I can focus on. And, you know, sometimes a simple question like, what does effort look like? What does max effort look like? All coaches always say, we want max effort. But what does that look like in your sport? Right. Like starting back on defense. Does it look like, you know, keeping your pace up the hill and cross country? Does it look like not breathing in the red zone and swimming? You know, what is, what is that process to get there? So sometimes... Sometimes I just walk athletes, and the reason I'm going on on this is because nobody else is doing this principle next, so it's kind of right. for But um, the process I like to do a lot of times is have the athletes think of the outcome. <laughs> What's the outcome that you want? What's the outcome goal? Because those are easy. You know, I want to win. I want to be the high scorer. I want to do this time in a race. And then work backwards. So what's the process that will get you there? So the outcome is important, but let's go backwards and focus on what are the steps that you need to change or do better or do more of in order to get there. Those, that's where mastery comes in, focusing on those steps, that process. I like that, yeah, definitely. That, yeah, those are kind of the big parts of the, the, the presentation is talking about how we can, what we're offering to help them get to that outcome goal they want. Mm -hmm. But it's not so much about focusing on that outcome goal, but focusing on the things that will get them to that outcome goal. Yep. Um, and I'm just gonna like have that. There is a whole section. There is there are some pages in the book. You can have them reference it too, like rather than just saying at the end. Yeah. Um, you know, you can have them turn to. Of course, I'm not finding it right this second. But there's a section in the book on outcome goals, setting goals, setting outcome goals versus effort goals, and um, you know, you can have them turn right there. Let me see where it is. Um, page 13 talks about effort goals. It talks about the GPS, but then on page 16, that's where we're talking about what's your goal. Well, there is an outcome goal, lower my cross country time by 15 seconds. The plan, that's the effort goals right there. Yeah. So, I mean, again, just having them their nose in the book going, oh, wow, that's where I can find that. And I find there's a lot of space on the page. So I have them just kind of draw a line and do it for your own sport. Write an outcome goal for your own sport. Come up with three steps to your plan to get there. And then, you know, shift is something that they can all, they can do if they want to. But I like that. That's really good. Yeah. Going. And I also love I also love setbacks don't define you. I wrote that down. I'm gonna steal that. I'm I'm glad. That makes me happy. I'm I thank you for the uh Kelly Rubin, thank you for the for the input on the presentation and everything. Um I really liked everything you guys said. Um ways to improve and the things that um did okay on. So yeah, this was a great stepping stone, I feel like. I'm excited about 
um, some of those more discussion points, especially, I feel like that's huge for talking to college athletes, like how to get them involved more. So uh, when talking to them about the, um, the outcome goals, effort goals, um, yeah, I feel like that will give a lot more discussion and interaction with the group. So Yeah, and that's, that's one of the reasons, too, that we call ourselves facilitators, not yeah. presenters. You know, a presenter is going to sit there and give them tons of information. I think what you did the first time um, a couple weeks ago was present. And this time you were really getting into facilitating because the less talking you do and the more talking you bring out in them, the more they're going to get out of it. I like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. I uh, got some work to do. That's exciting though. <laughs> but it's you know what? I get you know, I'm being picky because you guys are good. You guys, right. you know, we're, we're really fine tuning here. And I think there's right. some little tweaks just from doing it so often that I've seen like, wow, you can read the group. Like I'm talking too much. I got to shift this up a little bit and you'll notice it too. I like that. I appreciate, I appreciate all that feedback. Honestly. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Cindy's up. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Huh. Are they are they locked in? Uh, <laughs> here, I'll for mine. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No worries. No, don't they? You need to write it down. It, that is my. It's supposed to be my password, but I feel like I have fifty million emails. Um. Oh, it's a computer. They're looking. I, I thought they were trying to open a door. <laughs> no. Well, kind of. It's our scene. Uh, out. Metaphorically, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this mouse is like, what? All right. I was all like, yeah. I don't know. It's kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But that one works too, yeah? Yep, try clicking it. Real, lots of clicking. Keep it going. Oh, nope. ah, go back, no. go back. Oh, uh -oh. I'm a little excited. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. Click happy. All right, so uh, we've gone through step or principle one, and now we're starting on principle two, which is filling the emotional tank. So, as a group, I would like all of you right now to just imagine a tough situation that you went through in your sport. Okay, so maybe you didn't play well, whatever it is. I want you to really think about that. I want you to picture the field, the court. I want you to smell the popcorns popping in the concession stand. I want you to hear the feedback that you're receiving. Got it. Got it. So would anyone like to share their situation? Just raise your hand. Put your hands up. Chelsea. Mine's actually from practice. Okay. So uh, we were having a really tough practice. Um, everyone was going at it and stuff. And one of my good friends in the team, she and I were button heads because we have the same position. And the last straw that literally I started crying. Oh. <laughs> I don't like to admit that, but it happened. And the um, last straw was because she, when I was down on the ground because she was mad about something, she looked at me and she said, that's what you get. And then just walked away. And um, yeah. Ouch. Yeah. Well, that's not. And I was just nice. a freshman too, so it hurt. Mm. She was a junior. Okay, so if <laughs> we had to put that into the analogy of a gas tank. Yeah. Okay, so imagine like your gas tank being full, you're good, you're ready for anything, versus you're you're struggling, your cars hopping along because you have no gas, you forgot to stop again, right? If you had to think about that analogy of your tank, where was your tank? She right definitely there? siphoned my gas. She, she, she stole it. it. She took it out. Right? She took your gas right out of your tank. Yeah. If it was full before. Yeah, it wasn't very full, but she took me for every last drop. <laughs> okay. So in that situation, we're, we're all having a hard time, right? Because we're, we're having flashbacks to that <laughs> moment. Of, oh, I remember, right? Yeah. So in that moment, Chelsea, if mm -hmm. what could she have done differently? Um, I think being like a, she was one of the leaders in the team, she could have helped me up. And say, you know, even though we were competing against you, like, hey, you got it. Like, yeah. you're doing great. You're just giving me some words of encouragement, even though I know we were butting heads because they're going against each other, mm -hmm. which is pretty common. So just yeah. letting me know, you know, like, hey, I'm still your teammate. I'm still your friend. Right. I love that. I'm still your teammate. Yeah. Like, I'm always confused when, when two people 
on the same team have yeah. a hard time where we think that we need to siphon gas from someone else, yeah. right? To make ourselves feel better, yeah. maybe. Okay, that that's a great example. I'm sorry that that happened to you. It's all right. That, She's that's... still my best friend, so we made it through. Oh. <laughs> wow, that says a lot about both of you. Yeah, she's a person. Okay, so, oh, I got a little click happy again. I apologize. Nope, and we're going. Okay. Just so okay, so we were talking about filling the emotional tank, and you shared a situation where someone drained your tank. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's think in terms of um, other situations. Okay, so let's say mm -hmm. you've gone to class all day, and it's been kind of a rough day, and you Found out you got an F in biology and then you're a little bit late to practice because, you know, whatever happened, right? And you come into practice and your coach is already mad. Like, how, how is the coach already mad? We literally just got here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you come in and your coach starts a drill and your tank is whichever way I'm trying to go, right? Drained. Coach starts that drill. How are you feeling? Troy, how are you feeling? Just really low on energy like honestly like probably probably not feeling very motivated yeah like ugh, here we go yeah All right okay what if it's one of those drills you hate too yeah just gonna go through the motions like i don't know i've been in that situation and it's just tough to feel as much purpose i guess okay. maybe all right i totally agree with you there hannah what about you i heard a sigh from you like oh i can relate to this yeah our coach used to make us do a two minute drill is for full court layups and it's burned in my brain because we had to get like, I think at least a hundred layups in two minutes. And I mean, it was full out sprints wow. and it was terrible and he'd be screaming at you. And if you didn't get it, then you did sprints and then you had to do the two minutes again to try and get a hundred. It's like, I'm already gassed. Like there's no way I'm going to get you 200 or a hundred layups right now. Oh, and if you missed it, your teammates, so if you missed your layup, which is the one shot in basketball like you shouldn't miss, right? right. Oh, your teammates would be so mad at you. If you and, then you'd have, one. and then you'd have to lay on the ground and do push-ups or sit-ups while it's running and then jump back up and get keep going. It is brutal. That sounds like torture. Okay. So do you feel – I'm going to see if I can click and make this actually work. No, I'm uh, I'm sorry. I'm one ahead, aren't I? Did I look away and it jumped? I think so. <laughs> Here we go. See, we don't have to be perfect, right? Yeah. Sometimes things That's happen. Right. Yeah. It's, it's all good, good right? It's all good. good. Okay, so let me see if I can click this. I'm, I'm a coach. I'm not a techie person, so <laughs> please forgive me. Okay, so you were talking about you have to do this drill, right? Do you think you're very optimistic oh, that you're going to make not. your shot? No, your tank, not. your tank just keeps draining, right? Mm -hmm. Did you kind of give up like, well, forget it. I'm not going to make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys feel that? Yeah. If your coach said, hey, Hannah, let me give you some feedback about how you're going to actually make this layup, were you like, sure? I'm sure I just looked at him. <laughs> All right. Try to be respectful. Right. So you come in with an empty tank. Now, let's think you had a great day, right? You aced that biology test. Everything is great. You got to practice early and actually got to tape your ankle and you didn't have to rush, right? So now you're feeling good. Like, yeah, come on, bring it on. And your coach's like, hey, we got this two minute drill. Feeling a little bit better, maybe? Oh heck yeah, bring it on. Okay, bring it on. Exactly. 120 today. I love that. Optimistic. Like, I'm going to make every shot. I'm not going to be the <laughs> yeah. one laying on the floor doing push ups. Yep. Right? Yep. Deal better with adversity. If you miss it, you're like, all right, got the next one. Right? Yep. No biggie. You're more coachable. Hannah, hey, I'm not a basketball coach. So, what, <laughs> what can the basketball coach say? I don't know. Jump stop before you make your layup. Jump stop before you make your layup. There right? You know. You're like, yeah, sure. coach, right? <laughs> My tank is full. It's overflowing. I can handle this, right? So fill in the emotional tank. Empty tank, full tank. Obviously, this is what we want, right? We want to come in with a full tank. Okay, so let's talk about how we get there. Maybe what drains the tank, okay? So, so let's think back to those situations where teammates, coaches, your parents, your friends, whoever, drained your tank. I like how you said siphoned your gas. Like, I had it, and they stole it, right? You might think, you put your hand up, or you can just call out. I don't mind. Um, like non-verbals, non like play a big one for me. Okay, whether can you show me an example? Whether it's just like, come on, like the, the what wings. I know, I never heard that Hannah share that, the what wings. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Favorite, it's my favorite Or just thing. shaking the head, like just in disappointment, or like the little head, like, man, like he can't get it. Or 
even just ignoring, like turning yeah. the back, like things like that. Okay. Well, I hate to say those are good examples because those kind of make me yeah. sad. Yeah. But those are examples. Yeah. Yes. Anyone else you want to share, so Chelsea? Like Non-specific criticism. Like mm -hmm. if you just like tell me I did something wrong. My favorite is when coaches get on me for missing a layup. It's like, yeah, I know I missed a layup. Like I get it. That's the easiest. Like thing don't miss your layup. Yeah. Like thank you. Got it. You know. So just like things like that. Like pointing out the obvious. Yeah, the obvious doesn't. Oh, that's just like a bar, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Okay. I used to coach with someone who, if the girls were in the net, she'd yell, "Don't be in the net." Um, okay, yeah. that's that's not gonna fill a tank. Do you have any? Sure? I'm sure I do, but I can't. It's they're not churning right now. Okay, no, no problem. All right, so we talked about some of these criticism and correction, and correction is not a bad thing, but saying. Troy, seriously, if you would actually do this, maybe you'd make one. It's not exactly the right way. That as an athlete, you probably want to hear right. correction, right? Mm -hmm. Sarcasm. Pfft. No, really, Chelsea, you're the best one on the team. No, really. I'm mm -hmm. sure you're going to make this layup again. Mm -hmm. it, it saddens me a little bit that I can go so quickly to that sarcasm because <laughs> yeah. in some ways it is like a second language to me. Ignoring. This is just not even coaching at all, right? You, you miss an easy shot or whatever, and your coach just is like, all right, not going to give any feedback. Not going to give you feedback. You should have known. Right. Right. Uh, Nonverbals, you talked about that. Clicks and hazing. Everybody wants to feel a part of something. Yeah. Right? And it will drain your tank so quickly if you're an outsider. Yeah. Okay? So let's stop being negative. Let's stop talking about what drains a tank. Let's fill that tank. Okay? I went ahead of this a little bit again. Okay? But you guys <laughs> – um, what do you think? <laughs> I'm blocking this. Praise phrases. Yeah. I love that. Right? Tell tell everybody about that. Cause you're in my class, so yeah. Praise phrases, just uh, just little bits of uh, affirmation that can lift you up when you're feeling down. Um, really get get my gas tank full. Okay. Yeah. So can you give it? <laughs> can you give us an example of one you might give to? to let's see chelsea keeps missing her layup so what can you say to her chelsea you are a great athlete and a better person Ooh, oh wow oh Thanks, listen Troy. to the crowd oh that's really really nice i like that um anybody else i know you can kind of cheat feel free to cheat well i'm a little bit of a realist so that's great i love it when you say that but when i'm in game mode like i need specific things like i need you to tell me like hey acknowledge some of the things i'm doing right but then tell me specifically how to you know like what am i doing with my feet that makes me unable to break down a girl on defense or something like that you know okay yeah so i need very specific and truthful praise yeah i like that yeah because <laughs> It, it drives me a little crazy when someone does something and you hear that person like, it's okay, good job! Right? It's always someone's mom. Yeah. It's just like, you look pretty today! Oh right? We don't want that, right? I was running a half marathon. My mom did that. You're halfway there. You got this, sweetie. Oh, my God. <laughs> got more to go. <laughs> That's funny. Um, expressing appreciation. Like, Troy, man, thanks for working hard today. Like, yeah. you know, if we're in a drill together, like, thanks for pushing me. I appreciate that. Right? You're making me better. Um, listening, truly listen. When someone is saying, hey, hey, this is how I'm feeling, listen to your teammates, right? Belonging, I kind of mentioned that already. Everybody wants to belong, right? If you're sitting at the lunch table and one of your teammates is sitting over there, go grab them, right? Yeah. I don't know why lunch tables have so much power in in this world, but they do. Yeah. Um, Nonverbals, even just a little clap, hey, a little thumbs up, right? And a positive initiation. You are part of us now, and because you're part of us, like, you know, maybe you go do something together, mm -hmm. right? Positive initiation. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. We have a little video here, um, and it really ties in. Um, and this is on the PCA website, which, by the way, if you haven't been there, you should go to the PCA website. Thousands of videos, like a minute and a half. If you're already out watching kitten videos, replace some of your kitten videos with PCA videos. It will help you become a better athlete. Okay, so uh, David Griffin, and I'll be real honest, I don't know if he's, I don't think he's a GM anymore for the Cavaliers, but he was from 2014 to 2017. Um, here. The coach that I think of the most is, is probably my varsity basketball coach my freshman year of high school. Um, David, flags are 
Disneyland, Disney World, any of those things. You know, they got that height limit restriction on the wall. Um, this is a true story, honest to God. So the guy said, um, no, you can't try out for varsity. Um, you're not taller than this. And he had a thing on the wall. Um, I was five feet tall at the time, and apparently 5'1 was the key. Um, but I'm really grateful to that guy um, because I wasn't going to get there by playing. Um, it made me connect the dots in my career in a totally different way than I would have. Um, so it was a really meaningful thing. Kobe mentioned a guy, Kyle Smith, and Kobe, when we hired him from Columbia, brought, brought a phrase with him from Kyle that's really resonated for me. You can either be a fountain or a drain. And teams that are really, really good have almost all fountains and nobody's a drain. And so as you're building your teams and when you look at the type of coach you want to be, you can either be a fountain or a drain. Do they feel better or worse from your presence? Are you giving something to the group as a collective that's greater than you? And we want players that think like that all the time. And that's it's really driven a lot of what we do, and I don't know that Kyle knows that, but I would tell him thank you for that as well. Fountain or a drain? Does anybody have any comments about that? That just gives me chills. Like, it's true. Like, either you can build people up or tear them down, uh, fountain or a drain. Um, speaks volumes for, yeah, your team's culture, kind of what I think. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I think I wish more coaches would recognize everybody's fountain looks differently. You know, mm -hmm. how I fill someone up is not the same way Troy fills someone up. And so a lot of times I had a coach say, like, you're being too goofy. Like, you need to focus more. It's like, well, I'm still competing and I'm still focused, but like, that's how I'm going to build up a teammate yeah. is mm -hmm. different. Yeah, that's really good. Just like fountains all look different, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Exactly. It's great. And I like the fountain thing because it's talking about going up versus going down, right? So, the fountain, there's just water. In that little fountain, and everybody, have you been to the Bellagio? Anybody been to the Bellagio? That sounds that? rich and fancy now. <laughs> it's, it's in Vegas. You'll have to look it up later. Okay. Um, everybody gets so excited about these fountains, right? Oh, and it, they like go off every certain amount of time, and people come and take pictures and get engaged there, all sorts of different things. And it, it's just a pool of water <laughs> until the fountain goes off, yeah. right? And so if you think about that, like your team is just this pool of water. And are you that person that sets off that fountain where everybody is elevated? Or are you that person that drains the room? It's like, oh, here they come again, right? Okay, so I need two volunteers, please. Okay, these two right here. Hannah and Troy, could you please come up here to the front? I love being a person who gives feedback. Okay. It's one man job today. I'll give you the ball. Okay. okay. So. You said that you played high school basketball, yeah. right? So I'm sure you were amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's all about effort. Doesn't matter about the scoreboard. Okay. So you are going to be the basket. Oh. Okay. So I have this room full of people. So I need you guys to help me out. People. Okay. So we're going to talk about e tank fillers. We are going to be e tank fillers in a moment. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to drain the tank. Mm -hmm. So. Troy. Our buddy Troy yeah. is going to take a shot. I'm mad, Trevor Shady. I'm, I'm, there's a window right behind you. Please don't. Yeah, okay. So go for it. We are going to be drainers, right? Okay. All right, go for it. What the heck was that? Oh, oh come on, Troy. Troy. Take him out. <laughs> my grandmother shoots better than you. Are you kidding me? Wow. Oh, my God. Oh. Like that sucks. I don't know why you oh, goodness, goodness. Okay, just all right. The trap. So, <laughs> all right, Troy. How do you feel right now, Troy? You, look, I don't feel red. good. I don't feel, yeah, I don't feel good for making the next shot. <laughs> you're like, I'm going up. Yeah, I'm probably going to pass the ball and not shoot again. <laughs> good idea. Okay. Um, crowd, how do you feel about yourselves? Do you feel better about yelling at poor oh. Troy up here? Yeah. I do. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel good. <laughs> Kelly is vicious. <laughs> okay, so obviously we don't want that, right? Okay, we don't want to be drainers. We want to be fillers. So this time around, Troy, you're not going to make it. Okay. Okay? I know that you can and you're fully capable, but you're not going to make it, so don't let him make it. Okay? And we're going to be fillers. All right? Go for it. Even Way to be aggressive. Way to be aggressive. Keep it's shooting. Not, You'll get the next one. Way to get open. 
Mm -hmm. I look like my grandmother. I can't hear it. I feel better. I (laughs) believe in you. Okay, so the next time you take a shot, if you hear some positivity, do you is that lift you up a little bit? Yeah, I feel (laughs) I feel like uh, the room wants me to do well, sending positive vibes. Like I feel like I'm going to do better just from that. that, Right? You're on my side. Yeah. Right? Like, why would coaches yell out like? That's terrible. And you're like, okay, coach, next one, I'm on it, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. that's not very much. Like, so I don't want to let you go sit down without making a shot. So by all means, take one more I shot. Hannah, whatever it takes. Whoa! He's doing these I feel nice. good. I feel good. Good, Chef good job. Oh. Very good. <laughs> okay. So obviously, I mean, that was just kind of a fun little thing to just remind you that – when your teammate goes up, this is what I always try to tell people. Aren't we all just trying our best? Yes. Trying like, I, I made Troy miss it, but if I gave you no direction, would you be like, oh, I think I'm going to miss this? Uh, no. You're going to want to make it, right? Yeah. No matter what, we're always just trying to do our very best. So yeah. if we can just put it in that framework of, like, Troy's trying his best, man. Yeah. Let, let's lift him up because we all make those mistakes. Earlier, I clicked through a million slides, right, when I wasn't supposed to. Mm-hmm. So if you're like, she's the worst. Get her out of here! Like, do you think I would? I probably would leave. I might have left. Yeah. <laughs> but obviously, that's not going to help me on the next slide or figuring it out, right? All right. So, um, you guys all have books. Um, amazing resource. I love this. I keep reading it and rereading it. Um, but there's a little toolkit for you on page 50 and 51 that I want to show you. That are just some really easy things. Like, as you can see when you read this, it's not long dissertations about what you can do. These are little fixes that you can start, but find what makes you feel like you can be genuine. Okay? So we talked um, a couple days ago about this at another workshop that I did, that that if you're talking to your buddy, sometimes it'd be weird to be like, hi, Troy. You know, how are you doing? Instead, I'm like, hey, bud. That's the same thing as using names. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's important to point out, so like, hey, like, hey, hey, Troy, how, how you doing? Hey, hey, bud, how you doing? Right? Comings and goings. Don't leave a place without saying hello or goodbye. Isn't it kind of awkward when you leave it and you're like, okay, no, they didn't look at me. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Um, giving praise, appreciation, offering to help, glue ash, all these things are in here. Um, so you guys can look through those and utilize this. Also, go back to your teams Say, hey, guys, you know what? This is how I feel filled up. So whenever you leave the, the gym and you don't say bye to me, it, it drains my tank a little bit. So can you please just make sure, like, just say hi or, you know. Anyway, so looking through that. So we're moving on to the next thing. We're building, building. We started with the Elm Tree Mastery and filling E-tanks. And we're going to talk about leadership. So I want you to look over this list. Okay, we're going to read through this list. list. So number one, well, first of all, what is leadership? Which which is leadership? Telling the freshman to carry equipment. Trying to finish first in conditioning drills. Playing hard against a teammate at practice. Captain inviting teammates to lead warm-ups. Yelling, pick it up at your teammates. Encouraging a teammate after a mistake. So I would like you to pair up with someone that you haven't. We've done a few things already. So if you have to get up and move across the room, by all means, Move across the room, find someone you don't know, introduce yourself, and then talk about these things. Okay? I'm going to give you about two minutes to talk about these things of which do you think is leadership. Then we're going to come back, and we're going to share amongst the group. Now, a couple days ago, I had a really great workshop with them, mm-hmm. and some of you were there. And so I, this was a really great discussion. So I'm hoping we have another one of those. No pressure. Okay? Mm-hmm. So you guys split off. Mm-hmm. We are coming back. Mm-hmm. All right. So, which group would like to share? Who wants to kick us off? Yeah, I'll kick Troy? it off. Awesome. Thank you. Um, me and my group were talking, and uh, we uh, we think some of them would depend on the sport. Like, I think that two um, would not. I don't know. In running and cross country, sometimes it looked like the opposite of leadership. If you were Trying to outkick everybody at the end of a at the end of like a rep, okay. just to like show that you can finish a, a rep hard. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas like um, 
in basketball, maybe it's like, man, my teammates giving it, they're all like on this drill. Okay. Um, I don't know. We thought we had some great discussion, um, but we also thought that um, three, um, four, and six would be uh, good leadership qualities. Okay. So you did not mention one or five. Yeah, we didn't think that um, that uh, the pick it up would be taken well in some instances. Um, we think uh, we thought that it could be taken in a weird way. The pick it up, mm -hmm. like so, we thought maybe just statements like that that are kind of unspecific. Okay. Um, like we said on the filling up your tank, the specific mm -hmm. praises. Oh, yeah. Where that didn't, yeah, that yeah. didn't really fall into specific phrase. So okay. we felt like that would be just a tank drain or maybe. Because sometimes saying, okay, guys, pick it up is different than, guys, pick it up, yeah. right? I was on a, I, I coach a team and we had to ban the phrase, come on, because it could be, come on, come on, or come on. Those are the exact same words, right? right? But one filled and one definitely drained. So right. we just had to ban the phrase. Yeah. All right, great. Hannah, did you want to add anything? I know you guys were in a group together. Yeah, no, we talked a lot about the number five one um, okay. in my experiences with that. And it was dependent on the teammate for oh, me. Exactly. Um, I don't know what it is for me, but in leadership roles, I feel like you should have everyone's best interest at heart. And if I don't feel like you have my best interest at heart, it's really hard for me to feel like I can take your feedback. Um, great point. So that's, yeah. that's me. I, I know I can think of two teammates specifically and one was like a true leader in my mind and she I knew she genuinely cared about my success and then another was a girl that played often but kind of cheated her way throughout games and didn't actually go out and work hard after practice or put in extra time and then would yell at us if we didn't do that or would yell at us during practices if we weren't giving what she thought was our best effort okay. and that really was very frustrating for me. So it sounds like giving this type of feedback or encouragement would have to be earned and it would have to have the right tone. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Because being encouraging, of course we want to be encouraging. Yeah. Right? Right. But something can flip from a filler to a drainer just like that. Yep. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. That was good. Chelsea, did you have anything to add? I just think that I played basketball and so number five really resonates with me just because most of our things involve some kind of sprinting or drills that involve that. And so we're doing it as a team. And when I hear someone yell, hey, let's pick it up. I mean, again, it's the tone of voice. It's mm -hmm. who's saying it. Mm -hmm. But when I hear it, it's motivating for me. So I think I just struggle. So yeah, maybe yelling. So way. could I jump in with something on that? Um, yeah, yeah, please. Ruben, Ruben here. So, so Chelsea, what you said is let's pick it up. And to me, oh that that makes a big difference because you're you're saying hey we all you know you're including yourself yeah and, I like um, that. You, you know to me uh that makes a big difference yeah you know we're, we're, yeah let's the collective mm -hmm. yeah is building that teamwork building that culture we're talking yeah. about just a moment okay great um and also kind of reading your audience is what i kept hearing is okay if that person is a leader, they've shown leadership traits, then we're going to be more willing. Also, if they're inclusive of everybody, not us versus them. So great point, Ruben. Thank you for adding that. All right. So leadership is making those around you better. So being a leader, if you are a tank drainer, you are not making people around you any better, right? You are sucking them down, right? So part of leadership, making those around you better, fill in those tanks. Okay. Um, all right. We're building, building. We're going to go into talking about a positive team culture. So I want you guys to think about the E-tanks, think about um, leadership and what that looks like. So one of the things I think about all the time with our national team is my almost two decades of playing with them and being a captain or co-captain for most of the time was why were we so successful and, and how did we create a team culture that was positive and the first thing we would do is when a younger player would come into the team or a new team member we would embrace them and say welcome to the family it wasn't this team initiation of well you're the rookie so you're going to carry the water and you're going to carry all the balls and you're going to do this it was 
Carla Overbeck, the team captain, or myself grabbing a bag of balls along the way and saying, hey, this is something we all are in together as a family. And we're not going to haze you. We're going to welcome you. It's going to be competitive. We're going to kick you on the field a little bit. But welcome to the family, and we're so glad you're here. And I think that's important because you're setting the culture of what that group does. And there's not this hierarchy of we're the senior leaders on this team, and you're going to do all the grunt work, and you're going to have to do all the stuff we don't want to do. It was the culture of we are in this together, and this is what we value as a group, that you as, you, as a new member are just as important as one of the captains or a superstar on the team that's scoring all the goals. And you have the ability, don't forget, to create that culture. What is it that you want a new team member to know when she steps on the field or he steps on the field? I love that. Okay. So culture is so incredibly important. And I think sometimes as athletes, we overlook it. We're just like, oh, we're part of this team, right? But really, we need to remember that we have a culture no matter what. You can't say, we don't really have a culture on our team. Yes, you do. Everybody has a culture. And as athletes, you get to determine what your culture is going to be. Okay? So I actually coach high school, um, a group of, of high school volleyball players. And um, this is actually, I'm going on my 24th season. I started when I was three. Um, coaching, thank you. Um, it's very intense. I had a lot of people filling my tank early on, so yeah. So, um, but we we talk about this a lot. We're I'm very intentional, and our athletes are intentional with each other. And so they kind of joke and they say hashtag hyper volleyball culture, and we point it out anytime. And it's kind of silly in a way, but on the other hand, it reminds us. Wait, this this is who we are, right? And Positive Coach Alliance uses the term culture, the way we do things here, right? So where Troy goes to school, where you, where Hannah, where Chelsea, wherever you go to school, where whatever your team looks like, there's a culture there. It's how you do things there. And they're not going to all look the same, okay? So on the next slide, um, I want you guys to read through these. It says, what values do you want as a part of your team culture? What's important to you, okay? Being on time, bouncing back from mistakes, Teammates support for each other, respecting officials, superior conditioning, having fun, friendship among teammates, academically eligible, winning record, and that says constant improvement down here at the bottom. So I want you to think about, and you know what? Maybe your top three isn't even on this list, aren't even on this list, okay? You might think, this is super important to me. So I'd like you to get in groups of three, okay? And each person's going to share one of theirs. So if you have a duplicate, just pick a different one. Okay, and then we're going to come back. So I'm going to give you, uh, again, about two minutes. That seems like that was a good amount of time last time. About two minutes to talk about what do you want values for your team culture. Okay. Okay, so let's bring it back, and let's talk about this. So who wants to start? Hannah, would you, would you be willing to start? Yes, okay. absolutely. Um, I actually don't see mine on here, but okay. dependability is a big one for me. Ooh, yeah. Dependability. Mm -hmm. That is a powerful word. Mm -hmm. Being able, no matter what, mm -hmm. to depend on your teammates. I love that. I'm going to have to. <sighs> dependability is also up there. Okay. What were the other two that were shared in your group? Oh, um, we really liked um, having fun is a big one. I okay. think if you can't, even in the college realm, um, for us, like if I could go to practice and the music popped on and everyone started dancing a little bit during practice and coach laughed, I mean, that was just a little comedic relief. And then you jump right back in and just, it made it fun. Oh, it I made it fun that. to go play. I actually, I just want to interject something real quick. I was listening to an interview with uh, Jim Thompson and Steve Kerr mm -hmm. and that he has, um, I can't remember like his culture um, and his uh, joy, mindfulness, compassion, and competitiveness. And I thought it was really interesting that joy was number one. And we're talking about NBA, yeah, right? We're not talking about third grade basketball. We're talking about the NBA. Their number one focus for their team or the number one thing on the list was joy. Yeah. So love it. Love it. Yeah. It's sports. We're supposed to be having fun, guys. Yeah. Come on. All right, what was the last one? Um, Maybe it's not on here. I'm not going to lie. My eyes did go to winning record. At one point, because okay. I, I want that, but I think I can't have that unless I have constant improvement. 
So Ooh, you were listening. I tried Elm Tree Mastery. All right, I like it. Okay, <laughs> great. Okay, and then I probably would have some other people, but <laughs> bless you, Chelsea. Um, I'd have some other people share at that point as well. So oh, good we have made it through two of the three, right? So we're talking about making ourselves better, Elm Tree Mastery, making your teammates better by filling that E tank. You guys feel like already you have some tools that you can go out and take back to your team. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because you're this is a room full of great leaders, and I know that you're going to be able to go back and just change your your team. So. Yeah. Bye. Great. <laughs> awesome job, Cindy. Woo! Thank you. Great work, Thank you great to work. my Cindy. My, Cindy, your full name. Cindy is my full name. Cindy. No, <laughs> I heard Cynthia. 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 Cynthia is not my name. Okay. Yeah. I might start calling it Cynthia though. Cynthia. Cynthia. <laughs> Go That's for Cynthia. it. Yeah. All right. All right. Ruben's on mute. Sorry. So was I. I was saying. Oh. I was like, yeah, good job. Sorry. I <laughs> oh, I needed some paint filling and I missed out on it. <laughs> yeah, you did. No, I'm just kidding. No, that was great. How did you feel doing that one? Good. I, this is probably my favorite one, so uh -huh. I was pretty excited to get to present it. Good. All right. Yeah, and this was um, this was a lot too. So that was like thirty three minutes, which is not yeah. I'm not as worried about the minutes as I am because in your entire workshop you'll be able to break it up. You know, I usually just use twenty minutes as a guide to keep yourself on task, but okay. I guarantee I go way more than twenty minutes when I do e tank and this section. So I I can't be the pot calling the kettle black. But just to let you know to be aware of time, which I'm sure you would. Um, you know, with the activities, with the things that you did, it does add a lot of time to this, but I wouldn't say to take anything out that you did, but I'd love to hear from the people in the room because they were the ones that were actually there. What did they like about what you did? Either an improvement so, from last time or what did you like? Could I jump in with something since, since you meant, you mentioned the time, sure. is that okay? Um, so, so Cindy, um, uh, what, I think we got way too much stuff packed into this section of the workshop. There's too many yeah. slides. There's too much stuff. And, you, you know, to do to do in an interactive way, um, you know, to make this part of a one hour workshop. Um, I, I just, you, you know, so so I think that's on us um, for 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 what we've created this monster of a, a slide deck we've created, especially with this. pencil. So 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 um, I just want you to know that whenever I do this workshop, I don't try to do all the slides in this section. I, I pick and choose. And 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 one example is, I think the team culture um, activity and discussion is a good one. You, you know, but if I'm going to do that, I I, I want to do it right. You know, and so I either do it and and take out a bunch of other stuff in this section, or what I do more often is I, I, I don't do the team culture. Personally, I don't do the team culture activity um, because I think it's too much. So just, I just wanted to share that with you. Well, can I jump in too? Yep. yep. So oh. are these are these KU workshops only one hour? Um, they're usually about an hour and a half. Okay. okay. I mean, with the sport clubs, that's what we've had. Mm -hmm. So working with okay. them. And then with the athletics, um, probably about an hour, I would say, but it can be even shorter than that. I mean, it's very dependent on the the audience. Okay. So I think you guys know, I mean, it's nice to know more than you have. Go ahead. Were you going to say something? Oh, I was just going to say, I think with us preparing, we were like, ah, oh, let's do all the bells and whistles. Oh, absolutely. And so, um, I don't know, speaking for you guys, but that's no, kind I of agree. I think, I think it's good to know it all because then you know how to pick and choose what you want to take out. And one of the mm -hmm. things I was going to say, um, when you do these, I'm not sure if you have communication with the team beforehand, or if it's a single team that you're doing them with, but just asking, How's your team culture? And if they say it's fantastic, we have a great team culture, but we're really hard on ourselves and we make mistakes. You know that keys you into skip team culture, or you could ask like, how's the leadership on your team? So when I talk to a partner, we call them partners, but when I talk to someone before a workshop, that's where I figure out what their challenges are and what their goals are, and then you can tailor the workshop to meet your needs. But I agree with you, Cindy. I think knowing it all the way through is a lot easier to remove things than not knowing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. But thanks, Ruben, for bringing that up. That was great. Yeah. Um, Troy, Chelsea, Hannah. Yeah, I'm just going to go that. I think we should share with you that when we did do the sport club one, we integrated the team culture in a very interesting way. We had them come up with their words. So we kind of made it like, hey, we just gave you so many tools to create this awesome culture. What are you going to take back to your team now? Yeah. 
missed three things. And so I think that was a good way. So yeah, it was awkward to maybe to try to fit it all in. Um, Cindy, I love it. I was excited to come in and see this because I really like the energy you do and I know you're gonna engage us. I think that we contributed to you going longer because you <laughs> prompted so much good discussion with yeah. us. And so, um, I mean, maybe that's on us and not talk as much, <laughs> but maybe if you, you know, I think that's great. Cause like when we are, I think that's the most valuable thing we can do is create discussion mm -hmm. um, within these teams and, um, mm -hmm. you know, inter intra teams. Uh, yeah. So great job. Yeah. Thanks. I completely agree with that. Completely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that you added the fountain video. Yeah. I think that that's a pretty been just like, Picturing, visualizing. I like I like visualizing. So visualizing your your team as a stagnant body of water, and like either you can pop the top and uh, be a fountain and raise the energy, just like that Brad Stevens video later on in the workshop, or you can drain it. I think that's a visual thing for me that I like. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, just uh, your energy, like yeah, you bring it every time. So I think that. It's always fun to listen to you speak and in how you engage the room. Um, yeah, and then just, just yeah, the time was probably just the only thing with it. But mm -hmm. yeah, we, I think we all mm -hmm. contributed to it, and it's a long, it's a, I, it's also maybe my favorite section. Yeah. Is, so mm -hmm. I get that I would probably go really long too. Yeah. Um, I agree with everybody. I think you're doing awesome. Um, I as we've like progressed through this training with you and you going through double goal coaching, you seem more and more comfortable being in front of us. Mm -hmm. And again, I know with an age difference, I think sometimes that can be different <laughs> and it's kind of scary. And I think us being able to relate to each other has gotten clearer and clearer every time. And so I think you're doing a really great job at least connecting with us. And it feels like you're getting to know us and we can know you. And so I think that's the biggest thing is, it's not necessarily the concepts. I think you got that down, but you just, you're doing a great job filling space. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Ruben? She thinks I'm 27. <laughs> she is. She started I'm when not she was 27. three. I'm not 30. I mean, if you started when you were three, come on. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Ruben. Yeah, there, there's a lot of things I like about your, your demo, Cindy, a lot. Um, and I, I guess if, if I were to highlight the one that stood out to me the most, I, I really like the way you make it interactive and you really, um, you, 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 you let your workshop participants be a part of the workshop. I think that's super important. And I think you do it very well and consistently. Um, you know, uh, it, it, as far as a suggestion or a thought, um, at one point, you know, K K Kelly and I are sometimes on the lookout for things that will take away from PCA's credibility or a trainer's credibility. And um, at one point in the workshop um, on the free throw, you said, aren't we always trying our best? And I thought about that. And uh, I, I'm not, I'm not always trying. I know when I'm giving good effort. I know when I'm not. I've had teammates that sometimes, and as a coach, you know, uh, there were times when my players were not giving each other their best. So so I think what you meant to say in that moment was, don't we all want to make the free throw or aren't we all trying to make the free throw? Um, and it's a subtle difference. Um, and I don't know if everybody hears those subtle differences, but if, if I do, then somebody else might. So I just wanted to, okay. to point that out. Um, does that make sense, Cindy? Yeah, I, absolutely. I, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Um, Cindy, I agree. I think I think your your energy is really great. That's what I said the last time too. I think you really get it. Um, I think sometimes, like if I was gonna give you a suggestion, it would be don't put so much up front. If you've got a lot of interactive activities, you don't have to spend, I think it was like about six minutes in the beginning having like talking about all the e-tank drainers, the e-tank fillers. Like I know you were having trouble with the PowerPoint back and forth, but use your activity to help explain that. So like if I do the, the basketball shooting activity or whatever it is, whatever sport I'm doing, I don't tell them up front. I don't have them think up front what fills and what drains. I do the activity and I have one side of the room drain and one side of the room fill. And when the one side is filling or draining the tanks, I have the other side observing. So that then I say, okay, stop. What did you hear them do? What did you see them do? What did you, what did it sound like and feel like? So then they're giving me all the, well, I heard them yell. I heard them be sarcastic. I saw their arms go up in the air. 
boom, click, there it is. There's the drainers. Wow, did you see them do these things? You know, so it's not like you're not giving them the information and then having them support it by doing the activity. You kind of put them together. Okay. And it saves time and it makes it easier for you because you don't have to feel like you're doing the same thing a couple times. Yeah. Um, I take sticky note things, like things I don't want to forget. And right now I have what wings, praise phrases, and fountain or drain. Because <laughs> yeah. I think those are also, those are three things that I want to make sure that I, I use. So mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you for sharing those with me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, the video is great. And I love the way you gave PCA credit. It also might be a good plug for the dev zone. This is a, a video that we have on our development zone website, along with you know hundreds of others, if this can help you. Um, David Griffin, by the way, is no longer the general manager or the uh, executive director, just to let you know, he was there until 2017. They didn't renew his contract. Not that it's a big deal, but I know you asked, so I wanted to give that to you. Um, love the idea of sharing with the leadership piece. Um, I, I think that's a great discussion and I love the way you facilitated the discussion. So you didn't say like, you're right, you're wrong. It was, you know, that's a really good point to bring up that it depends on who the captain is. And I think so many of those things are sports specific. So I like the way you let each person sort of give their own opinion of that without kind of saying yes or no, that is leadership or it's not. Because I think that's what open-ended discussion is about. So I thought you did that really well. Um, and the culture piece I think is huge. I mean, I, I, not, I don't want to disagree with what Ruben said. That's how he does it sometimes. But I think when you're doing this with a team, the culture piece is, is crucial yeah. because a lot of teams don't even think about their culture. And you hit home really well that um, teams are going to have a culture, <laughs> whether you're intentional about it or not. And I think it's really important for teams to say, what's the culture like now? And what do you want it to be? And how do you get it there? So I think that's a really important part. And I like that at the end also. So, yeah. I know I feel like I could have gone on for 20 minutes about culture because that's okay. something as a coach that's super important mm -hmm. to me as well. So maybe kind of bringing my own experience in, then I shorten the e-tank a little bit and maybe, but like you said, to ask them coming into it, ask them what they're looking for, I think mm -hmm. is, is super mm -hmm. important. Cause yep. it's not me, <laughs> it's about the people there, you know, in the room, so. Yep. And we do, we do an entire workshop called Culture Practices and Games for Coaches. And the whole workshop is based around how to set up your cult, your practice and your games around the culture that you wanna, you wanna have. Yeah. So uh -huh. we hear you, that it could be a whole workshop, so we made it one. <laughs> well, smart. Yeah, it is. All right, yeah, well done, well done. Thank you. All right, hitting it home. Last but not least. I know, it's five o'clock somewhere, so I'm, I'm good. He wants the bulk. Okay. All right, all right, awesome. I also would just like to say that I would like you guys to imagine that you're college athletes. Thanks. Great job. Okay, so you guys now know how to make yourself better. I you know how to make your team better. And the last component is what? And remember, start at the beginning. Making the game Making better. Making the game better. And we're going to do that through honoring the roots of the game. Awesome. Third principle. Let's get rolling. So before we begin getting into the material, I want you guys, because I know we all have it, to imagine the rival, your biggest rival. All right? You can shout it out when I say three, but just picture it in your head right now. Imagine them. Imagine what they're doing, what they look like, what they smell like, what they sound like, everything. Really get it right there. Okay. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to shout it out. One, two, three. Babson. Emporia, Emporia State. State. Oh, gosh, rivalry. You got some inter, inter team yeah. rivalry here. Okay. <laughs> awesome. You guys list anything that kind of what made them your biggest rival? Lobster. No, I'm here. Okay. okay. I meant to hit mute and I hit camera. Sorry. <laughs> and a wine runner. <laughs> oh, anything? wow. Um, I think it was the tradition of the school. It's just that. Yeah. So it wasn't anything they really did. It was just them. I think the tradition, and then like when you went, it fostered that. So like Fort Hay State was our competitors. Right. Only when we always played well. Okay. Okay. Well, I want you to imagine now. We're gonna get into a scenario. Imagine that. Well, I guess I won't do it. Imagine that team. So let's say we're at KU, right? So K State. Yeah. Let's imagine K State yeah. getting up in our face. Big game. We're in Allen Fieldhouse, and they their fans are just heckling the crap out of us, right? Mm -hmm. Calling out names, everything. Imagine what that's like. Now think to yourself, what should you do? Just think for a little bit, and then I'm going to ask you to share. I'll give you 30 more seconds or so. Really think through it. All right. Now, if you could, please turn to the person next to you, even if you're rivals, and share what you should do in this heckling situation. I'm gonna give you about 34 seconds to share. Um, 
The care. first thing that came to mind was that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. Okay. Would anybody care to share with me now what some of the things you should do? Uh, yeah, I'll share. Um, yeah. The first things that came to mind were like how to retaliate, but um, <laughs> do you have a particular always... scenario that you know you were in an experience where you're pretty? You know, I'm a I'm a runner, and yeah. so a lot of times people yell really uh, mean things or like uh, yeah, really terrible things at us when we're running. So yeah. um, like initial instinct is to yell back, like. Okay. Um, just to defend yourself, but oftentimes it doesn't do any good. Yeah. All right. Um, and so, what do you, your initial thing is to yell back? Okay. Anyone else have a scenario? Cindy, you mentioned that you played volleyball. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what happens. So, you're right, you're ready to serve, mm -hmm. and someone yells at you. What do you do? What happens, um, or what, what's the response that happens to you, I guess? What happens? Well, I think once you get away from being startled, yeah. Um, to just really try, there's some movie, and I can't remember what it was, which one it is, but it's like clear the mechanism. Okay. How you like try to shut everything out. Yeah. All right. That's an appropriate response. I like it. Okay, so you guys are all adults, right? We know that you, you said your first reaction was to yell back because something stops you. So you're an adult. You know the consequences, whether that's an official is yelling at you, a teammate is yelling at you, your coaches, there's going to be negative consequences. All right, so we know that. But I want you to also think about your performance. So it's kind of trying to get at that with your your um, your serving because when someone yells at you, you might want to yell at them back. But I don't think we often stop to think, but what is that going to do to my performance? We're top level athletes, right? And yeah, we're going to get in trouble. But also, I'm going to not perform as well as I would like to if someone if I engage in something other than what I'm doing in that game, right? So I just want you to keep that in the back of your mind. I have like a story because this one right here, the power of knowing. I think you kind of got that when you were talking about running. Yeah. So I was a college basketball player, and we were in this big, big Puerto Rico tournament, and it was hot, and I naturally sweat like a dog, or whatever you want to call it. They had <laughs> towels for me waiting on the bench. They were ready to go. But this girl could not let it go that I was sweaty, and she was saying some mean things to me about how bad I was sweating. Had nothing to do with my performance, just that I was a sweaty person. <laughs> the sweetest revenge, or whatever you like, the sweetest response I had was that I ignored her. And I scored points <laughs> and I focused on my game and I did the things that I knew were going to help my team and help myself be successful. All right. So it was just simply ignoring her and, you know, she ended up following up. It's great. We won. Moving on. Okay. Um, so from that, so some self-control routine. So how did I do that? Do you have anything um, that stops you from yelling out for those people when they're yelling back at you? Um, just kind of got uh, Actually, the visualizing just like what it looks like from the outside okay. looking in, like what it looks like for a runner yelling back at a pickup truck and yeah. people dust <laughs> with the uh, fumes. So you like, visualize what it would look like. Yeah, it just uh, just doesn't look that great, um, and I think it looks makes them look even stupider whenever or mm -hmm. whenever they don't get a response out. Yeah. I think that's an awesome tool is practicing. You can do that, you know, if you're on this 14 mile run, you have time maybe to think about it. <laughs> but, you know, even if you're not at practice, you're at home, you can sit there and spend time visualizing, okay, what is it gonna look like as I move into this really competitive game of playing K-State on Friday? What are they, what is their fans gonna look like? Or what, what's their behavior gonna look like? And just kind of think through that and how are you going to respond? You can also develop what we call a self-control routine. I like to think of this very similar. We talked about, you know, flushing your mistakes. So it's very, very similar to a mistake ritual, just something that can get you back and refocus, like you said. Just maybe it's you're up to the serve, someone says something, I'm just gonna take a breath, let it out. I used to at the free throw line, I'd sing a song. It's just how I refocus and I could control myself, control my breathing, and that's where I was. Anyone have anything about that? Any comments? No? You like it? Can we think we can do this, maybe? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Yeah. I like a lot. Awesome. Can I have a volunteer, Miss Hannah? I'm just going to choose you. All right. <laughs> Can you read this quote for me, please? The game is sacred. It's a sacred field you walk on when you go to play. The game is forever. Players and coaches are not. When you're out on the field, you must remember your legacy and what you're representing. I love this quote because it gets at exactly what we're about to talk about, which is honoring the roots of the game. 
by respecting the rules and their spirit, all right? Because what's winning if we do it not in the manner of how it should be done, but right? Cheating. It's called cheating, that's yeah. right. Opponents, because I like to say this, like oftentimes we don't respect opponents, but without opponents, there would be no game, there right. would be no sport, there'd be no competition. We need each other to play the game that we love, correct? All right, officials, again, without officials, there'd also be no game or it'd be a free for all and it'd be dangerous and I don't want to play a game with no officials. Teammates, again, unless you're playing an individual sport, you really need those people to be on board with you. And of course, yourself. I think that's the root of it all, and we'll get back to that. So now that we know what root stands for, I want you guys, you can just write it down on a piece of paper first, just to think about it. But I want you to think about which one you might struggle with the most. You can write it down, and then I'm gonna ask you to share with someone other, so let's say we turned to the left last time, let's turn to the right this time and share with that person about what you might struggle with the most in respecting. Okay, we'll give you 30 seconds in And okay, would anybody like to share one of the things they struggle with the most? Yes, Miss Hannah. Yep. I think the one I struggle with the most is the self. Um, I have a tendency during games, if I get fired up, I get really fired up. Yeah, and so if I don't know how to control myself or how to rein that in, then I can't respect any of those. Yeah. So I think that's where it starts for me. Yeah, I love that point. That will remind me to say something in a second. Yeah. Anyone else? I personally, I know I just said, hey, I would never like to play in a game without officials, <laughs> but I personally struggled with this. I was a big girl and I got a lot of foul calls on me. Something about I couldn't control my body and it just <laughs> seems like they wanted to blow that whistle and it took a lot of restraint not to want to go up and talk to them. But I tell you what, I've never watched one basketball game or been in one basketball game where if you go up to the official and you say, hey man, what what, what, what about that call? That they ever say, oh, you know what, Chelsea, you're right. We're gonna, <laughs> it wasn't a foul. You know, if anything, they just put a big old target on my back and said, hey, the next one, she might not even touch anybody, but that that's her foul. So I think that we just have to take, um, just think about it. And I like to say to people, have any of you refed before in your life? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Did you did you think you called a perfect game? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> We're humans. We make mistakes. How did it feel? Did anyone ever approach you and call you out okay. for making the wrong call? Yeah. I coached a – or <laughs> coached – I refed a dodgeball tournament. Mm -hmm. That was a terrible <laughs> idea. What's that was the worst thing? idea ever. Are there rules yeah. of dodgeball? Yes, absolutely. People lie about getting hit with a ball. Oh, it's like I, I watched you get hit. Okay. And they'll argue that. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I know. I, so I think it's like, so we were once in those person's shoes. And maybe it just takes, it's hard to do so in a game. I know. But if we can just take a step back, maybe on the next time out when you're sitting on the bench, something to just say, hey, hey, like they're doing the best they can. That goes with everybody. You know, your teammates, your opponents. We talked about this already about filling that E tank and focusing on mastery, but they're doing the best they can. So just having that respect and respecting all parts of the game. Hannah, you mentioned that you have a hard time respecting yourself sometimes. Yes. And I really resonate with that, you know? When we respect ourselves, we're respecting our values, we're respecting what we stand for. And I think that if you have a concrete foundation, everything else will fall into place. If you respect yourself and your value first, then you will not cheat, because hopefully that's not part of your value system. But then you will not, you know, be rude to your opponents because you're somebody who values being kind to others. Same thing with officials and then of course your teammates. So if you have that foundation of respecting yourself, I think everything else will fall into place. Can we agree with that at all? Yeah. Awesome. All right, so here's what I want to leave a lasting little note with you. You guys are all college athletes, right? Yeah. You made it. You're here. I guarantee you that everybody that comes to your game, they're going to remember that you are a college athlete. But the important question is, how are they going to remember you? What kind of college athlete are they going to remember you as? They have, what, 40 minutes? Let's just keep referring back to basketball, but maybe even less for running cross country, right? They have a very limited view of you. They view you as a basketball, a cross country, softball, volleyball player. They get to see you in your competitive state. They don't get to see you go home and hang out with your friends. They don't get to see you go hang out with your grandma and play with your kids. They don't get to see that. <laughs> So they get to see you on the court. And so that's your that's what you're representing. You're representing yourself, you're representing your teammates, you're representing your school. 
So just leave that legacy. Um, and just, I just want you to remember that. How will you be remembered as a college athlete? Okay. Hopefully, after we've learned everything, that will be as a triple impact competitor. So somebody who's making themselves better, who makes the team better, and last but not least, who makes that game better. Because those triple impact competitors, you will find that they're rare. Not everybody is in this workshop with you. They are going to be a rare. We hope that there's more of them, but that can be you, and that's how you should be remembered. Cool. So yes, this is the end of when I get to speak to you, but that's not the end of your resources. So we all have this lovely little book here, Elevating Your Game. We've been referring to it a lot. It's a great resource. You get to take it home, read it front to back. So many tools in here. Um, little exercises that you can work through yourself, or we've had many coaches take this and work through with their teams. You, as a leader, can work through this with your team, maybe start a little book club, um, whatever you'd like. We also have this lovely, we like to call it the Dev Zone, but the PCA Development Zone, it's um, a beautiful website, lots of resources. I can't even begin to list all of them, but just if you're, I mean, every situation, if you're just, you know, you're just starting to coach for the first time or you're having some problems with your teammates, there's videos on there. There's just a bazillion resources for you to use and it's free. You can just go on it and look it up. Um, and just, yeah, so please, please use these resources. And don't forget to follow us on, I know that we don't have Snapchat on here and that's what most of you kids do these days. <laughs> but we have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have Twitter. You know, we're po constantly putting out positive coaching vibes, so please follow us, keep involved. Um, you know, we're learning, we're some uh, organization that loves to learn and grow every day, and so we're constantly putting out things that can help you become this triple impact competitor. And last but not least, you guys, so in this book, if you could please be so kind and evaluate me, because I love to feedback, because I love to learn and grow, I'm all about that. So on the last page of your beautiful book, there's a tear out evaluation. If you could please take, I don't know, I think you could get through it in less than five minutes, but take your time, be, <laughs> be, be mindful of it, but just fill it out in um, name and everything, tear it out, and you can just leave it here. If you have any questions, please come up and talk to me now, but otherwise, thank you guys so much for being here. You guys were lovely to work with. Fun, I had a fun time, and uh, I, I learned some things too, so this is great, and I, yeah, just thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Nice, <laughs> Elf. Super short. Sure. Sure. So sweet. <laughs> I think there's like heat. Just I think it's because they think it's still 39 degrees out there. <laughs> Chelsea, how'd you feel doing that? Um, a lot better. Yeah. I am not going to be honest, or I'm not going to lie. Roots did not used to be my favorite, but after going through this several times, I started to really like see how I could um, tailor it and kind of just think back to my collegiate playing days and how it would really have helped me in some mm -hmm. situations. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was awesome. nice. Yeah, you seemed a lot more comfortable. And again, I think I got to see a lot more. You seemed so much more relaxed. Mm -hmm. And I like to see some of your own personal stories coming through because I think yeah. that's. That's where you connect. So yeah. I, think, I think that was much better. This is why we do these demos more than once. The first time everybody's nervous and the second time they're like, okay, here, this is yeah. how we do it. So that was great, that was great. All right, I'd love to hear um, people in the room. What'd you think, what'd you like? What think you do better? That. Bring it on, she loves feedback. <laughs> I love the conclusion. That was such a strong conclusion. Um, I struggle with uh, wrapping it up like at the end and I felt like you, uh, you brought in, um, some good, uh, some good ideas for me for being able to wrap it all up at the end and um, talk about the, the development zone um, and how like the triple impact competitor is the legacy you want to leave and be remembered by, mm -hmm. and that's why we're putting on the workshop. So I just mm -hmm. felt like that was such a good ending. Um, yeah, I felt like you were a lot more comfortable this go around and. Uh, Presented the information like, um, like yeah, you're gonna learn this stuff and it's gonna help you. Like if you take it serious, so I really like that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Trey. Right. I liked how you talked about your experiences, and I think that really gives you that credibility of like, hey, I've been there. Mm -hmm. um, so I really enjoyed those, and you did a great job. Thanks, Cindy. Yeah, appreciate Good stuff. That.
I was fortunate that I had fish hooks. <laughs> and you also showed me that I don't have that evaluation in the back Someone of my Someone already book. took your evaluation. No, <laughs> it's not even in here. That's weird. Huh. I don't weird. know. Mm. That's surprise. Uh, That's weird. I'll give my feedback. Uh, I think I've said this before, but I can give a presence when you're in the room and when you're presenting. And I think it's very easy to get drawn in and buy into what you're saying. I think that's the biggest thing. I don't really know if there's a lot of critiquing to give, but I think I said this last time, I just would love to hear the discussion. Yeah. That would be fostered. I think that would be the most interesting part for me because I think Roots yeah. does that. Because yeah. even in the short second that we got to talk about the ones that we struggle with the most, mm -hmm. I think it really got me thinking. I think it gets everyone thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, good job. Thank you. Yeah, hold on. Ruben, are you there? Ruben. <laughs> I did that for you. <laughs> All right, well, I'll go. Um, if he wants to jump in, he can. So, um, Chelsea, I, again, I said, I just think I saw a lot more of your personality out, and uh, I like that a lot. And I do like the way you brought in your, you know, who you are and what you, what it was like for you as a college athlete. And I think that's huge because they can just connect to that right away. And also that you were honest and you were vulnerable about, you know, you weren't perfect. This is where you struggled. And I mean, we all know that now you sweat, you yell at officials. And I mean, it's, I'm a sweater too. So I'm with you. Um, so I like the way, like right off the bat, you know, think of your biggest rival. I mean, that just like evokes emotion. And I thought that was really cool. The one thing, just a suggestion for you, I have taken out the word heckling because when we do these mostly for high school kids and they have no idea what the word heckling means. Okay. So I've changed it to trash talking, um, you know, whatever works for whatever group you're with. Um, if they have a term for that, feel free to change it. Cause okay. I think sometimes like, I'm like heckling and you know, it's funny. My high school daughter's like, nobody says that mom. Like you gotta change that. Like, okay. We switched it. Um, I like also how you gave people think time. I think that's really important that you gave people time to think about it before they answer. A lot of times trainers will just ask questions and people are kind of like, I have to say the right answer. So if you give them a chance to think first, I thought that was really good. Um, the power of ignoring story I think was great. And the fact that you said, you know how, what I did, I didn't just ignore her. I ignored her and then I went and scored points. <laughs> so, you know, I think sometimes the power of ignoring is really tough to do for athletes because they want to do something. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I also use a story. Sometimes I taught my nephew. He was having a really hard time. He was a first baseman. And he was having a really hard time. And he's like, Aunt Kelly, I can't just shut up. I can't just ignore like when people are yelling at me. And I said, well, you're a first baseman. When they come by, if somebody gives you a hard time, just say so. Like the power, We talked about the power of so. Like if somebody says, oh, man, your team sucks. So what? You know, just, just something to, you have to respond to something. So I like the way you responded with, I just, I scored a lot of points. That's what I did. Um, I was laughing too, because I had a coach when I was like 10. It taught us to sing row 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 your boat at the foul line mm -hmm. so honestly like all through high school and and i used to just think I, every time i took a foul shot i'd sing row 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 your boat gently down the stream because it was to get us to, to shoot gently so i was cracking up when you said you so I'm like, oh i sing too it's great um the other thing i really liked was when you had people talk about the roots and what they struggled with and you had them like write it down i think that's really powerful for people to kind of write down something because it makes it real and you also said um, you, you gave them, cause a lot of times people think kids think like roots just means, okay, we all should be better at this. We should all be more respectful, but you brought up a specific example. I've never heard of an official take back a call when I've gone up in his face. And it's like, I put a bullseye on my back. Like that is so real because it's not just saying, we want you to respect the roots, the rules and the officials and the opponents. Cause we want you to just get the good citizenship award. Like that's not what it's about. It's about actually you, <laughs> the, the officials will help you more if you respect them. So I like the way you gave them a tangible reason of why that's so important. Um, the biggest suggestion I would have for you is that you don't need notes. I don't think you need them at all. So I wouldn't even bring them to the table because all of you guys, you don't need notes. You're, you're speaking from your heart. You know this inside and out. And I think sometimes notes are a crutch. And then notes also make you go, oh, I missed that. Let me go back. And I've seen too many trainers that are so focused on their notes that they're not listening and they're not letting the conversation just flow. So bag the notes would be my... Uh, I, I can do that. I didn't even look at it. Yeah. yeah. And then the last one would be um, at the very end of the workshop, it's mm -hmm. a lot of information and you're going to have a lot of glazed over faces. Sometimes it's just kind of fun to do something like, all right, when you put up at the end, making yourself better, your teammates better, and the game better, turn to a person next to you and say one thing you learned from Elm Tree of Mastery, yeah. you know, one, or shout it out, or I have a beach ball sometimes I'll pass around or, you know, toss candy out to the group, yeah. whatever it is. 
just some kind of a review. What's one tool you remember from this? What's one tool you remember from eTank? What's one thing you remember from leadership? What's something you remember for, you know, just to kind of review, because you're the last, you know, that's the last thing at the very end to make sure that they can take something home with them. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Ruben, did you want to fill in anything? <laughs> I mean, God, Chelsea's must have been the shortest. Is that right? Yeah, that was. Chelsea, I apologize. I had to step away. My son wanted to talk to me about something, and it was pretty important. Oh, please don't. Um, so, 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 thank you. Um, and I and I apologize. So, um, I missed it. It's okay. <laughs> it was good, Ruben. It was good. You can watch that later. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Um, I feel completely confident. Um, I would consider you all absolutely certified to go out and do this. Whatever you want to do from here on out, from your end, I think you're just going to get better and better and better. But I would definitely encourage you as much as you can to get out and watch each other. Um, watch each other do it. Give each other feedback. Because every, every time you do this, it's different. Every single time. But I can say with full confidence that um, you guys are definitely on the right track. And you're going to make a huge impact down there. Thank you so much, Thank guys. You, you guys are Thank awesome. You. Kelly, I'll talk to you Monday. Okay. Tuesday. 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 Yes. Okay. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate you coming in and hanging out. I'll see you, Ruben. Absolutely. So Hannah, is there anything else that you would like me to do like officially in terms of PCA or whatever? Um, I think that's a good question. Let me think about that. Um, and figure it out. I think I had some conversations with Chelsea earlier and this is our first time ever having anybody trained through our initiative. So um, maybe creating some sort of official process and a way to officially end it, whether that's a certification that we have. 